Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Bristol. Maybe I should put the next slide. We are we're going to be talking about uh, IO systems. Um, here's my information and uh, a great model right there in the front. That'll be me. <laughs> I'm the sales territory manager for the Caribbean for uh, United Technologies and Edwards. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about um, medium, small to medium systems, more in particular the IO systems. Um, on top of that, we also we are going to be talking about some of the changes in technologies that we are doing this year that we're introducing in the form of uh, new products. But uh, let's talk about the IO first. Uh, the IO system is comprised of uh, two panels. There's a smaller panel called the IO64. Uh, that panel has one loop with 64 devices, capacity of up to 64 devices uh, on any mix. What does that mean? That means that you can have uh, two detectors and the rest of the points could be modules, or you, know, you can have 10 modules and the rest of them will be detectors. Uh, it's not like the usual panel that it's like divided in half the capacity of whatever you have on the loop. Um, that will be that many detectors. No, in this you can mix and match. That little panel also has uh, two NAC outputs. NACs are notification appliance circuits uh, with capacity up to 3.75 amps. That will be more than enough, especially with our new devices, the LED horn strokes that we have that we're going to be talking about uh, later on. And that cabinet uh, has the capacity of housing a battery of up to 10 amp hours. The IO1000 is a one panel that could be converted to, it's one panel that has one loop of 250 devices. That will be 100 detect, 125 detectors and 125 uh, modules. And it can be expanded from one loop to four loops. Uh, the IO-1000 have four NAC outputs uh, of uh, up to six, amper, six amps, and uh, the cabinet can house uh, batteries up to 18 uh, amp hours. Now, common feature in these systems is, for instance, uh, the capacity of have integrated Ethernet. You can choose to have an optional Ethernet card put into the system and, and use it to report uh, alarms, troubles to a central station. Or this card could be also used to programming or it could be used to do uh, remote troubleshooting. You can also choose to have a, a dialer on the system. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's an RS-232 card, an uh, optional card that can be used to install a printer into this system. The, uh, another common feature is that you have two auxiliary output power of to half an amp. Um, this system can have annunciators. You can have up to nine annunciators per panel, and the connection could be A or B, class A or class B. Uh, this system features a removable chassis that house all the electronics that's a great feature because uh, on the installation, you can use this to uh, make it a lot faster and protect the electronics while the, you know, electrician runs the pipe into the into the system. Um, the system features system-wide synchronization. This is basically a feature that compares the system to our previous systems. Uh, on our previous systems, you will have to program the panel, and if you use a, a, a nanosphere, you will have to program the nanosphere separately. On this panel, this feature or, or the programming is shared. So once you program the panel, the program will communicate and synchronize the programming with the nanosphere. You don't have to do a separate programming on the nanosphere. And and you can and you can program this system totally from the front of the panel. You don't require a computer in order to do the programming. Um, it features auto program for the system and auto program for the loops. Uh, or you can uh, you can use a computer with a software that is called the ILCU uh, to do the programming. And when you use the software, you know basically you have 
full functionality from the front of the panel, but it's a lot easier. I found that at least on my side that it's a lot easier when you're dealing with it with a with a computer. <clears throat> we move on to the next slide. Um, the system features um, four points that are really important. You know, you got installation tools that gets you in and out of the job quickly. You have integrated IP that lets you use the power of the internet on your favor. You have remote diagnostics that permits you to know what's wrong uh, on the location before the technician get over there. Plus, you have the capability of doing remote maintenance where you can perform uh, history reports, sensitivity reports, uh, dirty detectors warning, walk tests, and you know any number of, uh, of, of reports from far. You don't have to be on the site. Let's talk about the installation tools. On the installation tools, you have uh, a fast ground force check, okay, a quick add and delete device, um, device communication quality. You can you can know exactly how how well are you communicating to the device, and and these are great because the reason for these tools is not only to get you in and out of the installation quickly, it's trying to minimize those service goals that will dig into your into your profit if you don't manage them well. Okay, um, you have incremental programming. That means that if you have the if, if when you program the, the panel, if later on you want to add one or two devices, you don't have to redo the whole thing. You just connect the devices into the system. The system will see them, and it will ask you if you want to add them. Then you just do the programming for those devices, and that will be it. Um, when, he, when he talks about default personalities on the system, default personality means that each module, each, each detectors from the factory, they come pre-configured with a certain way of working, okay? Uh, a photoelectric detector knows that it's a photoelectric detector. A pull station knows that it's a pull station, you know. But some of the modules can be tweaked and reconfigured to fit better applications. 99% of the cases, you don't need to deal with any of this. You just put the devices, you know, do auto program, lift the system up, and that's it. But if you are ever into the need to have to tweak certain features in the system, uh, you can do that easily via the programming. And um, one of the biggest assets that we have is that we have automatic electronic addressing. That means that when you use the I.O., you're using signature devices. Signature devices are the premium products of uh, Edward Systems. Uh, there's no dials into the into the back of the system to put any address. There's no, there's nothing to change because the device itself has a serial number that is unique. And the system is able to read that serial number and you can do the programming based on that serial number instead of, you know, trying to feed certain addresses. There is an address scheme, but that, that, that address scheme, you can actually tweak it into your advantage if you need to, but you don't, you don't need to most of the time. When we talk when we talk about integrated IP, uh, what we're talking about is that this was the first panel that we introduced, and this was introduced about eight years ago, um, that had IP capability building into it. Even though that we have a separate card to do the IP connection, the CPU of this panel has IP capabilities native to it. So when you put this optional card, that connection from the card goes directly to the CPU, okay, to the capabilities of the CPU. So it's, it's unlike all the panels from, you know, our competitors, that what they do is that they encapsulate the output or the capabilities of the serial card or the serial connection into IP. No, we have native, native IP connection that allows us to use this system or, or this connection to do uploads and downloads of the programming, to access a variety of reports, okay? Uh, no telephone lines are required for doing diagnostics, and you can centralize the service for the customers or the, parent or, or the partners. <clears throat> when we talk about remote diagnostics, um, 
I was blown away when this banner came out because I have never seen before a, such a wide array of uh, diagnostics built into a system on this size. This was most, before it was just relinquished to the higher end systems, to the big like the EST3, you know, and big systems like that. But with this, you been digging into the suite and the software, you have the capability of uh, seeing the voltage in real time. You can see it on that window in the background, the one that is in the back. You can see the, the current panel status, totally everything right there. Device status, for instance, on the front on the front window, on the upper part, you can see a list of devices. One of them is highlighted, and all that information that that they, that it was pulled from the device is displayed in the mid and lower end of the of the of the window, where you can see the address, you can see when was the last time that it was serviced, you can see when it was manufactured, you can see how many times have gone into trouble or alarm, and if it has gone into a trouble or alarm, you just highlight that trouble, and, and there's a little window over there that it will tell you in, in words easy to understand, not in technical terms, what that means. Finally, in the bottom of the page, you can see that you have two graphics, one for the the communication quality, okay, and the and the dirtiness of the detector. That's another detector. If the detector is a little bit dirty, how, how it's reading? Because each and every one of these devices, not just the panels, but the mo but the modules and the detectors and all these field devices, they have a microprocessor building into them, and these devices, they are able to read themselves and to diagnose themselves. So the panel doesn't have to do this. The panel just have to synchronize the communication with the device and react to it, okay? Um, you can see event logs, you can see trends, and, and all this can be done via Ethernet dialing or RS-232. So these remote diagnostics are not, are not just done over the Ethernet connection. If you're using the island, you can use it too, or if you're using the RS-232 connection, you can use them as well with the software. Um, it doesn't say so over here, but uh, most of these tests or most of these diagnostics can be also seen from the panel, from the front of the panel. You can invoke them from right there uh, via the menu, but it's a lot easier to see them when you're using the software. Um, remote maintenance. On the remote maintenance, instead of using two or three guys on the field, you can just send one guy. The guy um, make sure that, that you get connected. Once you get connected, you can get the report from the walk test, history, status, service, devices, um, configuration, everything. You can, you can pull it uh, via Ethernet dialing or RS-232. So you don't have to have one guy right in front of the panel, the other guy in the field. You can just send the guy in the field to walk the, the to walk the uh, the site, do the testing, and when he's done, he can call you up, say, "Hey, I'm done. I'm moving to the next building," and you can connect remotely and pick up all these um, reports directly from the panel. Now let's talk about the new signature devices. Um, the signature devices are, like I said, are the premium probes of Edwards. If you can see over there in the, in the slide on the right-hand side on the top, each one of them has a microprocessor built into it. That's, that's, cube, that's that cubic chip that you can see in the motherboard of the detector, okay? Um, these detectors vary from like just one sensor, like a photoelectric sensor, to up to four different technologies into one device, okay? You can, it, it combines photo, thermal, it combines uh, um, CO, and all that with the, with, the, with the microprocessor to come up with a new product, a better product for the market. Um, these devices can have up to 32 uh, diagnostic codes that help you reduce the maintenance cost and give you on parallel diagnostics, okay? These devices provide you with a dirty, dirty detector warning and automatic compensation. 
So it does compensate throughout time. It keeps reading the, 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 the how dirty it is. Even when it comes when it becomes fully dirty, it doesn't go into alarm. What it does is like, you know, hey, I've been dirty for the longest time. I've been saying that I'm dirty, dirty, and nobody take care of me. So it disables the communication to it or it disables the device so it doesn't provide you with a false alarm. Um, this device, like I mentioned before, has electronic addressing with a uh, quick connection and, and, and quick programming just to the loop. And every device has a microprocessor building into it. Uh, part of the new detectors are these ones that are showing over here on the screen. Uh, actually, I decided to include this uh, table because this table uh, allows you to see our current SKUs, our current offering, compared to our previous two offerings. So if, you know, if before you used to use a SIGA PS, now you can use a SIGA PD. That's basically the same type of detector, but in a new series, totally improved, okay? So we have photoelectric, we have photoelectric heat, we got uh, rate of rise heat, we have uh, uh, fixed heat, we have um, um, PHS, it's photo heat and CO, the CO detector. Also, we have what we call. Let me let me bring it up to the, to the screen. A new device. There is this one. There is it has two heat detectors building into it that you can use in a single device to provide you two different alarms at two different thresholds. And we have this device, which is the Optica Optica series. The Optica series is something that nobody else has in the market right now. Okay. It will be a requirement for all the manufacturers to have something similar in the near future. I mean, in 2020, they were supposed to come up with that. We were the first that come into the market. But this is a new type of detector that is very resilient to force alarms because it has two emitters, okay, building into it, not just one. We can see the different molecules, and we can compare from different angles to measure the sides and see which of these molecules that is, that is actually reading are from an actual fire and which one are from, like, kitchen fire. You know, if somebody burns a burger, if somebody burns something in the kitchen, or if you have steam, you know, it, it will be resilient to this type of false alarms. For the Caribbean, for the people that are live next to the beach, this is great because it, it helps you segregate all these different contaminants that may, may make it to the chamber and usually kill, cause false alarms. This would be a lot more secure, a lot more resilient to false alarms because it knows exactly which is the size of the particle that should be reading, and then it, it discriminates everything else from the chamber. This is basically the same. We're talking about UL2687 edition. That's the one that's going to be changing next year, where, or is scheduled to be next year, where all the manufacturers should comply with this new regulation. Right now we have, from this new device, from this new series, we have the photoelectric detector, which is the SIGA OSD, the photoelectric weak heat, OS, OSHD, we got the um, photoelectric with uh, with carbon monoxide OSCD, and the one that has everything, you know, photoelectric carbon monoxide and heat, which is the OSHCD. These products are available now. Uh, these products use the same basis as the previous series of uh, signature series detectors. And we keep on using the same modules that we had before. When, when we talk about modules, we have the biggest series of modules that you can buy. We have uh, modules that goes into two by two boxes out in the field, or we have modules that you use in motherboards and put them in central loca localizations in order to you know make the installation easier, depending on whatever you have on the field. These modules, they have their own personalities, but it can be changed. 
and they have also electronic addressing. And these modules give you the benefit of letting you know per module if you have a ground fault, where is the ground fault. And that is something that I haven't seen from other manufacturers yet. Uh, we have a new module, which is like a high power relay that allows you to uh, connect directly to air conditioning and other systems. You don't have to use an like, interposing relay. We came up with that one right now. And um, for those of you who are going to be doing a lot of installations, we have a, a diagnostic tool for the signature for the signature line where you can use to do all the diagnosis. The same basically same diagnosis that you have from the panel, you can do it from this machine but without the panel. And you guys, if you guys wonder why we did that, it's because some of the customers that were asking us to develop a tool like this so that they can diagnose the system without necessarily having a panel involved and maybe, you know, have the panel, the panel suffer because of a current draft or something like that that goes into it. So it's available, and basically it does everything and more that the panel does when it comes to do troubleshooting. Uh, you can use it to initialize the loop, check the devices on the, the status on all the devices, reestablish the communication, check how dirty are the devices, reset devices. I mean, what cannot be done? Even even the the even the report can be done with this, and. Um, and this will go into, you can see over here in the top, let me see if I can use a pointer. Okay, like, like right here in the top. It doesn't allow me, come on. Right here in the top, there is a USB connection where you can send all that information to the USB. Besides the new signature, we also have new Genesis. Genesis, when when we came with them in the market, they were um, the smallest, most aesthetically pleasing devices in the market. Um, now we came up with these devices over here, which are LED versions of our devices. Uh, right now we have the wall horn strokes, the small one, and the and the big one. On strobes. Uh, later on during the year, we're going to be launching the speaker strobes and the, the ceiling speaker strobes and the outside horn strobe and speaker strobes. Uh, here you can see the series completely. We are up to half of it right now during this part of the year. Like I said, we're expecting to have the full line by the end of the year. Um, benefit of this devices is that they consume a lot, lot less uh, current, where you usually before you would put maybe four or five devices, now you can put 15 devices. Actually, you can see over here the two tables are comparing the same, the same amount of consumption on, on the power from the one above and the one below. Uh, in 12-gauge wire, for instance, uh, you could only put 11 devices, but over here you can, on, on the, with the other one, you can put 51 devices. Okay, and look, look at the distance. For you, you came, you, you came from 550 feet all the way to 2,500 feet. So this is great to save you money on wire because now you can use a thinner wire or you can use the same wire that you were using and have a lot more distance and a lot more devices. You can even have a thinner wire and have more devices on the thinner wire. Um, for instance, you can probably use now the same 18-gauge wire that you were using for the SOC, now for your next, saving you a lot of money and putting the same amount of devices or more into that same loop. We also put ports into the devices for troubleshooting. Uh, 
on the one that you see above is a small unit where the ports are building into the device. On the other one, is, it has like a little like a little board that you put into it, and you can check it out. Uh, plus, the one below, which is the biggest, is the bigger device. It has like a frame that you put in the wall that is removable, and you know it allows you to do all the changes that you need that you have to do from over there, and then just put the device at the end. Um, easier to service than before. Plus, um, now we basically discovered that if you want, if if a cover breaks, you don't need to buy the new the, the new device, a new device for changing just the cover. You can just swap the covers, have the cover changed by buying the color the, the cover by itself. And basically, that's it. That's a new family of products and a new uh, new product introduction. I apologize a little bit for the way it was a little bit deorganized, the way that it was saying, but I, I tried to make this you know, as informative as possible in the shortest time that I have to prepare for this. Um, my name is Joseph Brisson. I am the territory manager for the Caribbean for Edwards. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here and, and, and share this time with you. Um, I want to thank uh, Full Protection, Giovanni Lopez, Jorge, and, and everybody involved for giving me the opportunity to be here and participate in this activity. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, approach them. And, um, you know, if you need to contact me, contact me or, you know, you can contact me via them. Okay? Um, thank you very much. And have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.